Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free. I'm a child of God, yes I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me, who the sun sets free, oh, is free.
still and trust what the Lord has said is done. Find rest, don't strive. Watch as faith and grace align. You silence all my fear I won't be afraid You don't let go Be still my heart and know I won't be Surely love and mercy, your peace and kindness will follow me, will follow me. Surely love and mercy, your peace and kindness will follow me, will follow me. Surely love. That the Lord is in control Be still, my soul Stand and watch as giants fall I won't be afraid You are here you silence all my fear I won't be afraid You don't let go Be still my heart and know Well, good morning. It's so good to see you. My name is Jason, and I am the, one of the pastors here at Hope Church. Uh, and I'm so glad that you've chosen to uh, join us today for our Hope Online uh, broadcast. This morning, we are in the first week of our summer series uh, called Essential Playlist. And uh, I'm not sure uh, if you use Spotify or if you use, uh, if you use Apple Music or if you're still in the, uh, the, the, the time of making compilation CDs or uh, what we used to call mixtapes back in the day. Uh, but all of us usually have a playlist that, w- that we go to uh, of our favorites. This weekend, we're beginning to, uh, to, to look specifically at uh, some of the Psalms uh, throughout the summer. And so we are going to almost as if, as if we hit random on the Psalms, we're going to look at a specific Psalm each week uh, throughout the summer, uh, and this morning we will begin uh, with Psalm 2. One of the amazing things about the Psalms that we love so well is uh, they say that it is the only book of the Bible that, uh, that not only does God speak to us, but it actually speaks, the Psalms actually speak to God from us. And the Psalms actually speak for us. It's been said uh, in in many different ways, but uh, one of the ways is that uh, oftentimes when we don't know how to express our emotions or the way that we feel, 
we can find a psalm or we can find a song that does it uh, much more effectively than we can. I was talking with another person uh, this week in the midst of all the, the struggles that we've been through as a nation, and, uh, and, 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 and he and I were talking, and he said, uh, he said, this reminds me of Marvin Gaye's song, What's Going On? And uh, uh, just because of all the unrest, and, and I said to him, I said, listen, I, I love Marvin Gaye's What's Going On, but to be honest with you, I love Donny Hathaway's version better. And uh, we both just sort of laughed together, but reflected on the fact that the lyrics and time and feel of that song, even though it was recorded in 1970, feel so appropriate to our time today. And this morning, we're going to look at Psalm 2. Psalm 2 is a, what some people refer to as a coronation psalm. It is a song that uh, was written, uh, some people believe it was written and performed when David uh, became king of Israel. Uh, and the theme of the song, basically, the theme of this song that we're going to look at today is that David is going to, as the king of Israel, going to have challenges and going to have struggles and going to have conflict. He's going to face rebellion. He's going to face uncertainty. He's going to be betrayed even by people that are very close to him. But in the midst of all that, David can still have great hope. Right now, we're in a time um, with all different kind of challenges. Is... uh, As we've said, 2020, we've had more challenges in the first five months of 2020 than many of us have experienced our whole life. We are dealing with, we're in the midst of a global pandemic. We are in the, we have the highest unemployment in in nearly a hundred years. We're having um, civil unrest that we've not seen in our nation in 50 years. Uh, And and among all that, we have a presidential election that will take place uh, this summer. The economy is down, people are shifting, people, all things are changing, people, kids are out of school, and uh, we are in times that, it, that uh, we have never been so disrupted. But the God that keeps us when times are good is the same God that keeps us when things get challenging. And so I'm going to invite you to turn with me in Psalm 2 and look at how God sustains His people in, in times of turmoil. The psalmist writes, Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed one, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. The psalmist is saying here that he is, he, the psalmist is saying that why do people rebel against God? He's saying ultimately all conflict, ultimately all conflict in some way stems from the fact that we as humans have rebelled against God. In Psalm 1, in Psalm 1 earlier, he says the blessed man is the, is the man that meditates on God's word day and night. Then here in Psalm 2, he says, why do the nations conspire together? Why do they gather together and conspire against God and against his anointed one. In the time of Israel, when David was king, David was God's anointed one, so to rebel in this time against Israel and against David was to rebel against God himself. And David says, why would someone want to rebel against God and what God is doing? It goes all the way back to to Genesis chapter 3 and the in the Garden of Eden, how, how Satan approaches Eve, or the serpent approaches Eve, and, and, and tempts her to sin. He convinces Eve that God is holding out on her, and therefore she needs to, to break loose from the shackles that she feels God has placed her in. David is saying, or the, the writer of this psalm is saying, why do... We as humans, why do we continue to rebel against God and against His good and perfect plan for our lives? One of the things that we notice is that rebellion is universal. 
We all have a rebellious streak in us, and we're all rebellious against God. And, um, and when this happens, God still loves and cares and draws us to Himself. We know that, uh, that, that, that difficult times and challenging times and disruptive times are something that naturally happen in life. They, 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 they naturally happen, and, and we just happen to be a time where we have all these disruptions, uh, one on top of another. But, but the psalmist gives us three great hopes of why we can have courage, why we can have faith, why we can, can have confidence and, and, and joy even in the midst of the disruption. The first reason is found in the response of God. Look how it says in verse 4. It says, He who sits in the heavens laughs, and the Lord holds them in derision. Then they speak to Him in His wrath, and, 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 and terrifying them in His fury, saying, As for me, I have set my King on Zion, my holy hill. You, you, you know what God's response to our rebellion is? God, God's first response to our rebellion, to our conspiring against Him, to our... God's first response. God is not threatened by that. In fact, here it says that uh, that he who sits in the heavens laughs. Now that that, that is not uh, that is not uh, a form necessarily of ridicule. God is not saying that uh, that the challenges that you and I face uh, are not big. They're not substantial, but. Uh, but, but what God is saying, what, what, what I believe the, the writer here is saying, is that the things that you and I worry about, God simply kind of, uh, they're not a threat to Him. As we grow older, we begin to, uh, to notice that the things that we're threatened with as, as children, we almost begin to find comical as we, as we grow older. We... Uh, we hear the, the tales of uh, the things that, uh, that, 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 that children are, are, are worried about. And uh, to a child, they're very, they're very real. But uh, oftentimes, we look at them and we just sort of laugh because we realize the absurdity of the child being worried about that. It might be monsters under the covers or it might be uh, some, something lurking. It, 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 it's, it's, but, but at the time, it's very real. And if you were honest, there was something as a child that you were scared at and you, and you find out, really your parents kind of laughed and snickered at it. And the reason is because although it threatened you, it was not a threat to them. And as the parents of you, they were not going to allow whatever you felt was threatening you to, to hurt and harm you. God is not threatened by the challenges in our world. It's not that He doesn't take them seriously, but uh, they're in no way a threat to Him. They're in no way going to, to bother Him and, and hurt Him. This week, especially, we've seen all kind of conflict um, about, our, about much of the political response that has been taking place. One of the events that... Uh, that really got two groups of people wound up on the, ex on, on the extreme ends of the political spectrum. Earlier this week, uh, President Trump cleared out a group of individuals using, uh, 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 use, 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 group, group, had, the, had a group of individuals cleared out and then went and took a picture holding a Bible in front of St. George's Church near the, near the White House. And two groups of people were really, really riled up by it. There was one group of people that, uh, that, 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 uh, that basically said, said yes, this is, this is a sign of the president as standing up for, uh, standing up for, for Scripture and, and, and boldly proclaiming his faith and, and boldly holding a Bible and showing us how he's leading us biblically. And then there was another group of people that were totally offended by it. But by the, by the means that were used to, uh, to take the photo, by the fact that he wasn't invited, by the fact that, uh, that, 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 that holding the Bible seemed inconsistent with everything that, he, that he's done that week. And, and as, as excited as one group was, the other group was angry. The 
question is, what, what is God's response? And, and it looks to me from this passage that in heaven, not to make too much light of it, but God simply looks at the things that, that upset us, the things that get us wound up, the things that excited, it gets us excited. And it seems here that God from heaven laughs. <laughs> now, why does he laugh? Well, I suspect in my imagination that, that on one hand he's laughing because, because simply holding up a Bible and proclaiming something does not mean that God is going to bend his will. But on the other extreme, he laughs because the things that might infuriate us, God is like, don't worry about it. <laughs> this isn't. God, don't, don't worry about it. I, I got this whole thing under control. Let, 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 me say it, let me just say it this way. There is nothing that any ruler in any nation in any time can do to force the will of God. And there is nothing that any ruler in any nation in any time can do to disrupt the will of God. God is going to do what He is going to do. And that gives me great confidence because despite everything that's taking place, right now God is in control and He's working it out for those of us that love Him, that have been called according to His purpose. D don't, don't worry. Don't get excited. Don't get upset. God in heaven right now, is he, he is laughing and He is snickering, not because He's making light of it, but because He is in control and He is going to work it out for our good. God in heaven laughs. I don't mean to offend you or minimize the things that you're anxious about, but just as a child is anxious about things that the parent knows really isn't a threat, right now the things you and I are anxious about, the things that we're panicking about, the things that we think are out of control, God has in His hand, and He's working it out for our good. We have the great hope because we have the response of God. Well, there's a second thing that gives us great hope, and that is the redemption of God. That God is going to personally get involved, and when He personally gets involved, He's going to make everything all right. Look with me, beginning in verse 7. It says, um, in verse 6, it actually even starts, He says, As for me, I set my king on Zion, my holy hill. Verse 7, I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with pieces like a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. What, what, what he is saying right here is that uh, he, he's alluding to 2 Samuel uh, chapter 7. And in that, uh, David asked that God would, he asked, David asked God, he says, he, he says to him, God, would you allow me to build you a house? And, uh, and God basically says no, but he tells David, he tells David that you will, will be, that, that he, tell, he tells David that, uh, that your descendant that comes after you will sit on my throne forever. It, it, was a, uh, it was a reference first to Solomon. That Solomon would sit on the throne of David, but it ultimately found its fulfillment in the person of Christ, who came as a descendant of David, and not only will rule on the throne of Israel, but will rule eternally. Christ rules eternally. And because of that, we have great hope. Notice how he words it here. Uh, in, in verse 7 he says, The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. It, it, it is, uh, it is language, language that we see in the New Testament referring to the Father speaking to the Son. When Jesus is baptized. John chapter 4, he comes out of the water. And the Father says, this is my Son, with whom I am well pleased. Matthew chapter 17, we're there on the Mount of Transfiguration, and, uh, 
And Peter, James, and John go with him. And, and Jesus is transfigured before their eyes. And, and Moses and Elijah are there. And God speaks from heaven. The Father speaks from heaven. He says, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. God provides redemption because He sends the Messiah. God, God is not distant and uninvolved. But, but in this passage, He talked about how He would place His Son on the throne of Israel and it points to the future that Christ will sit on the throne eternally. We have hope, not just for hope's sake, but we have hope because Jesus is sitting on the throne and as long as Christ is on the throne, we have nothing to fear. In the midst of difficult times, we have the response of God. He's not threatened by it. We have the redemption of God. He sent Christ to sit on the throne. But most of all, or in light of that, in those two things, in partnership with those, we have the refuge of God. Notice how he words it beginning in verse 10. He says, Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and trembling. Kiss the Son, lest He be angry, and you perish in, in the way. For His wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all those who, who take refuge in Him. What he's doing in this passage, in these last three verses, is he's speaking to, the, to those that were belling in the first three verses. In other words, the people that were rebelling, the people that were plotting, the people that were coming against God and against his people, when we get to the end of the chapter, he is, he is inviting them to find their refuge and their hope in Christ. He's not settling scores. He's not, he's not casting them off initially. What he is doing is he is inviting the very ones that were rebellious in the beginning to have a relationship with him and to submit to his, to his, to his rule, which is gracious and eternal. When Eve rebelled, we mentioned earlier, when Eve rebelled in Genesis chapter 3, God, God judged them, but He also provided a promise that one day the Savior, the Messiah, would defeat Satan and that redemption would be found in Him. He, here what's happening is He's speaking to those that were in rebellion and he's pleading with them to come to, the, to, to Christ, to, to God. And that gives me great hope. That no matter, no matter how many times you and I have rebelled against God, that we are invited to repent. That we are invited to, uh, to, to, to turn from our sin and, and to turn toward Christ. We have, a, we have a God that is great, and we have a God that is mighty. We have a God that is powerful. We have a God that is just and will execute justice. But we also have a God that is willing and desires to extend mercy. Charlie Date says that, uh, pastor of, of, the, of the Progressive Baptist Church in Chicago says, that you, you, you cannot have the justice of God without the mercy of God, and you cannot have the mercy of God without the justice of God. God is going to execute justice on those that rebelled against Him, but He's also going to extend mercy and invite us, those that have rebelled against God, to be forgiven and to have new life in Him. He tells us how to do it. He says, kiss the son lest he be angry. That, that, that just simply meant in Hebrew, submit to God and acknowledge him as Lord. And then he ends it with these great words. He says, blessed 
are all who take refuge in Him. It doesn't matter how difficult the times are that we live in. We can take refuge in God. It doesn't matter the mistakes that we made in the past. We can be forgiven and take refuge in God. It doesn't matter how many times we've let others down and let ourselves down and let God down. It says here, blessed are what? All who take our refuge in God. Yes, God is powerful. Yes, God is mighty. Yes, God looks down on all the, the things that, uh, that, that we fret about and He's not intimidated by them. But this God that is over all things and sovereign over all things and controls all things, this God invites those of us that have rebelled against Him to come and find our refuge in Him. Kidner says this, there is no refuge from God, but there is refuge in God. I, I don't know what you're going through. I, I, I don't know how you've um, felt anxiety this week. I don't know what your biggest challenge is right now, but I, I do know this. The biggest crisis that you and I will ever face in life is the fact that our sins have separated us from God and that we need to be forgiven and we need to be redeemed and Christ is offering that redemption to us. We can have hope. Because of the response of God. He sent Christ to die in our place. We can have hope because of uh, the redemption of God. That Jesus died in our place and rose from the dead. And we can have faith and hope and eternal life in Him by turning from our sins and, and confessing Him as Lord and following Him. And we can have hope in the refuge of God. Father, I thank you that you are a refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in time of trouble. And Lord, just as uh, Marvin Gaye and uh, Donnie Hathaway asked what's going on, so the writer of this song be begins his song by asking why the nations rage the king's plot in vain. But even though, Lord God, we have rebelled against you, even though we have uh, in some ways declared war on you, the way that you deal with your enemies is by offering forgiveness and restoration and refuge. Father, as we find our refuge and our hope in You, we pray that You will give us refuge in this world. Father, we look to You, we love You, and we thank You. In the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Well, uh, I'm glad once again that You've chosen to uh, be with us this morning on our first uh, our first uh, Sunday of the Essential Playlist. Throughout the summer, we're going to be looking at uh, the other psalms, uh, and uh, we hope that, uh, that they'll speak to you. We hope this morning's uh, message spoke to you, and we pray that the other uh, messages uh, will speak to you uh, as well. Let you know that we will be uh, gathering later on uh, in the summer, all back together. We'll send you some more information about when that will take place and some instructions for that and some precautions uh, that we're going to be taking um, but during the season, we're just so thankful that uh, we've been able to gather uh, through, through, uh, through, these, uh, through these videos and through our services uh, online. I want to remind you that if you live in the Dayton area, if there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. We'd love to serve you. Uh, even if you don't live in the Dayton area, let us know if there's something we can do for you. We'd, we'd love to serve and come alongside you uh, any way that we can. If you've not filled out the connection card, if you could go ahead and do that, uh, fill out the con connection card online, uh, we will greatly appreciate it. Uh, and I want to thank you, uh, Hope Family, just for your continued uh, financial faithfulness uh, during this time. Uh, many of you have uh, continued to give through, uh, through 
uh, through texting to give, through the, uh, through the website, uh, through writing checks and sending cash to, uh, to our address here on Wilmington Pike. and let you know that you can continue to do that, uh, and uh, we just thank you uh, for that. I hope you, have a, hope you have a great week. It's my privilege to, uh, to be with you, and if there's anything we can do, please let us know. You can find us at hopeindayton.org. Have a great week. God bless.